TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But how much longer will we be on Twitch? Because kick, they said we can react to football, as in soccer, as Americans know, but football for y'all. Um, and, and honestly, I'm all about that because I've been trying to get into the sport. So I'll be up out there more for real soon. Got me out here acting real bad like Kai Sinat. You feel me? <laughs> My bad. Um, but you, anyway, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, don't forget, we do got the Patreon link down in the description for that, man. That's what really be keeping the channel functioning and moving and booming. You feel me? And then we got um, the Discord as well. The Discord as well, man. Loving that, loving that, all the reaction. I can go. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna put for anybody who's looking for Benidorm. I'm gonna be watching that on Kick. Yeah, I'll record it and put it on Patreon as well. But I'm gonna watch it. You can come join for, and Kick. We can watch it for free, or you can catch it in Patreon. Simple as that. <laughs> um, all of these links will be down in the description for Kick, Patreon, Discord. Anyway, man, I'm talking too much. Let's get into this Police Interceptors episode 19. No, season 19, episode 12. Okay. I'll be actively searching for these. So, found one. Gonna do it tonight. Come to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. Ah! But neither. To the cops. Race for the door. Battling on the front line. Is it the back door? Sir. Yeah. Bloody. Coming. Multi fair. Were they strapped? Cars take a hammering. Bloody hell. Check. Just a head on collision like this? Get up the wheels. And go where others fear to tread. We now are on the old new road. It's a dirt track. Speed 5 0. Or to fit. Oh, sh. But interceptors take pride in their wheels. So the cop car wash runs day. And night. They gotta wash their own cars? <laughs> That's funny to me, I don't know why. That's hilarious. <laughs> Though police cars don't stay clean for long. <sighs> Lisa DeSantis and Jim Carrington are in a spotless marked car in the city centre. Always on for it. Yeah, sure. Always on. ready. We're like coiled springs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But all's quiet on the West End front. The action is in the country. Somebody had the nerves to tell me that y'all don't have dirt roads in the UK. What's this? This not a dirt road? What's to the side? What's to the left and right? That's like 12 foot high grass. I get that it's in the country, but it's in the, it's in the UK. It's a dirt road. I think they was trolling me. It's compassed to the speed. Um, it's four wheel drive vehicle in the rural area. There's been a number of diesel thefts. Investigating fuel thefts in the sticks, Dave has hooked a Jeep Cherokee that's failed to stop. It's got to be going, it's got to be north. It's got to be, got to be north. He is north, way north. And now, Carburton Lane, Carburton Lane, 5 0 in the National. What is that? 12 view 10 for support from yeah. Stinger, please. 10? That means his works are. I think that is a very long way, let me just check. It may be a pursuit too far. Redford. Oh, God. 
it would be an hour at normal road speed. Yeah. It could be time well spent. You could start making I'm going to start mate. making because if these people close, we've got to be in it to win it, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Go for so it. I'll just, I'll do a bit. It's an hour away at speed limits, but Lisa travels a bit faster than that. Oh, I'm still seeing. I'm so lost. They're about to go to a police chase that's an hour away. Yo, it should be done by that time, shouldn't it? We're going to run out of gas. An advanced pursuit driver, she's trained to top a ton on the right roads, but she might need further skills tonight. I reckon it'll go off road before we get there. Okay. Off road, off road, standby. There we go. Mystic Jim. Jimbo predicts. Yeah. 25 miles north, the runaways on a merry dance through Narnia. He's driving a sure footed four wheel drive. Dave's traffic car is more suited to motorway pursuits. And the cavalry can't come soon enough. I'm running parallel to an A road. Help me out with mapping. It's just so rural up there. I swear, bro. Like, I wouldn't know where I was. You need a horse and buggy to chase that. Like, I don't yeah. Know. I don't. I think Dave's probably lost his bearings. A bit. That may well be true. Yeah, it's a lost loss on some woods in the Walbeck estate. Not sure what my nearest A road's going to be. The Jeep's vanished. Interceptor United, nil. Knott's Forest, one. It's just a vast area and you're looking for one vehicle. Lisa and Jim have reached the area. The runaway's out here. How'd I get there in one minute? Here yeah, somewhere. You just need a bit of luck. Like I say, got to be into it. Teleport it. Yeah, if you don't go, you don't know. Since we're doing catchphrases, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? That's it. Oh, yes. The Jeep shot past with a marked car in its slipstream. A swift three-point turn and they're right in the hunt. This is it. This is the thick of it. So that lead X5, we are just coming up behind you now. We've got your offside indication. Has it gone off road? Has it gone off road here? It's gone off road here. The runaway is up to their old tricks. We are off road on a track, generally towards the A1 still. So it's into no man's land. Speed in, uh, 4-0. Uh, it's not making ground on us. And out of Lisa's comfort zone. Ain't no bears. Uh, the A1. Uh, it's getting slightly on us. We're uh, on this track. And it's getting on the A1. Left, left, north, back. Bloody hell. Her four-wheel drive X5 is more suited to this mud bath. But this is a test for even the best drivers. Uh, just approaching the next junction. It says hit the A1 and it's gone it. But with... Jim is navigator. Or is it left? Left, left, left. Lisa weathers the rallycross experience and she's back on tarmac. Next junction ahead is going to be 5, lane 10. Uh, speed is 8, 0. Just gun it, mate, you'll catch him. Zulu 2, about half a mile behind you, making ground. Make sure I will listen for my daughter. Right when I get into a good show, she wanna eh, eh. I'm just playing. Let me go check. He's knocked out. Or 20 seconds at warp speed. For Foxtrot Zulu 2 to Pursuit Commander, we are with you now. Uh, there's a dog handler and at least two other mobiles with you. Yes, yeah, sir. They need to set up to box him in, so the lead car overtakes. You have to gun it, mate. Come on. We are ahead, Nick. We're trying to get past them. 
Stand by, Zulu 2, we're now directly behind the vehicle, we'll take call sign pursuit, we are committed, A1 southbound, there's one X5 ahead. One shot. But the Jeep has hung a left into off-road hell. Hey, zero, come on, off. Zulu 2, vehicle is off-road, off-road to the near side of the A1, he's out of sight. Talking, bro, hit that left off that uh main road and disadvantaged. Hit the lights, it was gone. Just gun it, mate. You'll catch him. Interceptors are after a runaway Jeep. Has it gone off road here? The driver's gone off road in the middle of a wood. Zulu 2 vehicle is off road, off road to the near side of the A1, and they've lost him. He's out of sight, you're going to have to get us on mapping. Their last hope... Step by, step far away, are you? ...is 1,600 feet up. No. The bus is almost still five and a half minutes. Since when police interceptors got the helicopter, like, the helicopter view. And eight miles west. Ooh. Got a helicopter, yeah. The chopper's in a race to reach the spot and guide the troops before they lose their off-roader altogether. He's there, he's there, he's there, he's there. He's there. From Zulu 2, we've got him in the distance again. Um, he's in fields though, um, still trying to make ground on him. He's a good 300 yards ahead of us. They can't get traction. I'm skidding everywhere. You're alright mate, just keep your foot in. And even keeping the suspect in sight is a tall order. Any update Jim? We've lost him, total loss from where we are. I'm losing it. You'll be alright here. Yeah, come on, I'm just coming down straight mile. No, I've come out of that road. I can see where his tracks go. The conditions are crazy, but there's a blue light at the end of the tunnel. The last view that we got was uh, yeah. the VRM was completely... So this is where he came out? The, left. the runaway's outplaying the interceptors. It's all right, I will give him. He knows his off-road tracks around here. But their star player has just come off the bench. Yeah, that helicopter like LeBron. LeBron in his prime. <laughs> yeah, about 90 seconds away. We're viewing it at a distance, but we've not got the vehicles yet. And this is a game of two halves. I think we might have found this vehicle in a field. Near Barton, between Babworth and Barton. The car's been abandoned, but the chopper's locked onto its occupants. There must be four people, I think a dog, just making a way from it in the fields. Uh, we're just firing the night sun up now for you. Let there be light. Yeah, Zulu 2, we've got lights illuminated on your right away. We're underneath uh, you now, M Pass. You can see your lights up. <laughs> With its 40 million candle power night sun, M Pass blazes a trail to the figures who fled the car. So literally in the direction your vehicle's facing along the hedge line. Understood, getting out of the police vehicle. Yeah, they have turned around now, so they are moving away from you. Should we just yeah, make some ground and get hold of them? The they just side of that edge line. Midnight ramble, anyone? Uh, probably about 150, 200 yards. I don't know, is it just me or does this seem like an awfully lot? Just for some people in a, you know what I'm saying? At that point, at what point do you just be like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> they said we're not taking no L's. We sending a helicopter out to you. It's up. With the bird above. They're just walking. They're not running. Plus a posse of police on the ground. This won't take long. Like now you got to walk all the way back to your car. Two step through the turnip crop and they're face to face with four suspects. You. Here. Where we can see her. I'm going to win. And four suspects, many dogs. Well, can somebody get hold of the dogs? One person. Can you tie your dogs to one of them branches? Well, they won't because they're on a lead. The men are none too compliant. Thread that lead there on that middle dog through its collar. And deny arriving in the ditched Jeep. You think you might have come from the motor? The chopper team confirms that these are the men from the car. So you're all detained and you're all under arrest in relation to that, all right, for failing to stop dangerous driving. 
they're not coming quietly. Mate, listen, you're in control of a couple of dogs. What I'm telling you is there's lots of cops here, including firearms cops and officers with taser, mate. You walk with us, walk with us along with But eventually, the posse sets off through the turnips. So no nothing yeah. stupid, mate, yeah? It's a good result. No one's got hurt. No vehicles have got damaged. Just a bit muddy. <laughs> They don't know why the men failed to stop. Yeah, and one suspect seems more concerned with his dogs than criminal charges. As he should be. I can't even tie it up, though, okay? we're crawling, we're choking. How is it cruel? It's no more than having them on a leaf. What, what, we're trying to think of the welfare what, what, of the dogs. This? What, yeah. There's mesh there. Right. If I no. Right. Yeah. Look, See I this here? See this here? Okay, Woody. Here. Yeah. That one. But what if it breaks the person's It's game, a thick gate. gate. The dogs are becoming an issue. We need to make sure the welfare of these dogs is maintained, don't we? It's better if you can get someone to come and collect them than us try and get them to some form of kennel. You're basically telling me After to leave this dog. Them in the car. You're Hold on a minute. You've, you've given them the ride of their life tonight, to me, and you're telling us we're cruelty to dogs. Mate, well, what about 100 mile an hour up the A1 and the cross fields with your dogs in? And you're talking to me about cruelty were to they, animals. Were they strapped in? Did they have seat belts on? You know, I bet they hit the ceiling a few times. It is, isn't it? It's cruelty what you did. The debate is pretty painful too. Look, we've managed to organise another cop who I think has got a van with a decent, secure, comfortable cage in it, which usually we put people in. Yeah. That person can come, that Bobby can come, scoop up these dogs. Yeah. With a lack of leads. Just do what you've got to do. They need to improvise. Wait, one minute, chill out, will you? I know, but you're making it difficult. Don't, don't, don't make it difficult. I've had that dog years, so I don't want to put that dog under stress. She, do you know what? Look at her, she's all right. Yeah, she will be until they put her in a skaggy kennel. You know what I mean? She lives in a nice She's home. not. She's going in a police van yeah, back to your mum's house. She lives in a nice you. kitchen, no, you less. Big animal lover myself. I look at him and... I just feel sorry for him, you know. They've obviously been involved in that pursuit we had, and you could see this sort of mess, you know, the cars getting. Lucky Quantum ain't here. If y'all watch with me, y'all know who Quantum is, big Quantum. When the bumping and stuff like that, I just can't imagine, you know, poor things going through. With the suspect away to the nick at last, Lisa can work on a smoother return trip for his dogs. Unfortunately, this one hasn't got a name, um, and I actually feel quite sad that it's not got a name. I'm gonna call him Stan. Stan the man. Come on, good boy. Um, do I leave this on it? Sit down, sit, sit. I notice people who name their dogs human names or name their pets human names, they normally got relationship problems. So if you're watching this and your dog got a human name, get Tinder Plus, Tinder Gold. Do something different. No. <laughs> Come on, Stan, get with Come the programme. Up, oh, in, in. Good boy, stay. Sit, sit. Oh, God, it just licked my face. Literally <laughs> just licked my face. She's lovely. She's an old bird. In, 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 Hilda. Work. Stan and Hilda are safely locked up. Which just leaves the car they arrived in. As you can see, it's ditched. Bloody hell. It's muddy. My bad. I'd buy it. It's good off-road. It has got a VRM on it. Yeah. It's under here, look. <laughs> yeah, there's your offence. Ah. Oh. Looking for failing to display. One careful owner. <laughs> Jim and Lisa's one careful owner wasn't careful enough. Although the courts couldn't prove which man was driving, all four were found guilty of failing to give drivers details. They got fines and costs totaling £239 each for six points on their respective licences. None of the men were connected to the fuel thefts in the area and no further... $230 for each. It was like four of them. That's like $1,000. £1,000. Y'all went off-roading... <laughs> All these police, all these police, um, all of this manpower, y'all call a helicopter. Y'all, the helicopter probably wasted more gas than what y'all put out in fines for this. But the action was taken against Stan, Hilda, or any other dog. So, bro. And after Lisa's nerve shredding off road experience, there's only one place to be. That's what happens when you spend your time driving across fields. 
at the car wash. Is it at least free? They were proper ditched. Come to return the favour. Yes, please, Sergeant. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interceptors never forget a face. What's your name? James. James. No, it's not. It's Joshua. Or a car. I don't know how many's in it. Uh, Queensborough Road. Gav Hall of the Knife Crime Team has recognised a Beamer belonging to a suspected dealer. On a hunch, he's lit it up to check it out. Yeah, that vehicle's stopping Queen's Bower Road. It is one up, I believe. Play six for a minute. You just jump out, take a seat in my car for me. Matt does the honours. Yeah, I'll take a seat in. But Gav has the questions. Yeah, let's just take a seat there. Oh, but is you okay? Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm because he knows this lad doesn't own the car. What are you doing driving this car? Uh, who, whose is it? Uh, my friend's in it. I've just insured him because I had a crash in my Oh, have you? The questions get harder from here, fella. You got any uh, dr drugs on you, mate? Is there anything in there? Uh, no, not, not that I know of. Well, we'll give you search and the car. Yeah. All I will say is if you've got a little bit of personal, you're not getting nicked for it, we'll deal with it at the roadside, I assure yeah, you that. No, not that I know of. No. Not that you know of. Odd turn of phrase. He's not aware of there being any drugs in there. Probably best to check. He's already tried to hide a dealer phone that's on top of the car. The driver had a burner phone on him, and with what they've just found in his car, things are about to heat up. Just step out again for me, look, chap. Pop your hands behind your back. I'll explain what's happening in a second, all right, but at the minute we've found a quantity of drugs. I don't know how much yet, so I don't know if you're going to be... A quantity of drugs. ...be arrested just... I don't think I never heard that word like that. Well, well you know, but the way he did, a quantity of drugs... Just on suspicion of possession, i just take that off you for a second, or if it'll be possession with intent to supply. A few ounces in there. Axe? Weed. Two probably ounce bags behind the seat here. Half an ounce bag and a deal bag in the centre console there, so... So, enough to nick him for possession with intent to supply. I take it as... it's Peewitz, so. eh? Looks like it, the amounts. Yeah, Peewitz, then. Eh? Where's his phone, this lad's phone? Oh, he's got a burner as well. Yeah, then. His burner... They're gonna head to your house, buddy. Burner phone could be vital to building a case. You still want a 10G? Yeah, it's bang at it. It's all searched up in it. Yeah. Alright. Text from suspected customers and... Can you read that one more time for me, sir? Building a case. You still want a 10G? Yeah. Get in character. You still want a 10G? He was, you still want a 10G? <laughs> Expected customers and weed in the car have earned him a blue light taxi to custody. He'll be taken to custody, he'll be strip searched, we'll continue the search for the car and then look to search his home address or anywhere else that he might have some control of. Next stop, Oxclose Nick. If Matt can stand the smell. I might just get high in the car now. <laughs> right, Ox close then. I'll see you at the Nick. The evidence points to dealing, but Gav's too long in the tooth to take that for granted. I suspect that he is probably dealing cannabis. That's why he's got the cannabis in the car. Hopefully we'll find a bit more at home. Because he's going to deny that that cannabis is his. Because the car's not registered to him, so it may come down to not just the phone work, but forensic analysis on the drugs packaging. Packaging it. Back at the Nick. Uh, I've not done the back, no. There are no signs of further drugs in the car, but there is an interesting discovery. This is plant feed. It's got a cannabis grow somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he's got a grow, mate. He's also got plant. What a dumbass crimp. Like, these criminals be just dumbass. 
you moving around in a car that's not yours, that's known for, you know, it's been flagged already for this for these charges. You got stuff on you. <laughs> you got grow feed on you. Like what? Plant feed and things as well, which indicates he's probably got to grow somewhere or is working with someone that's got to grow. Uh, the biggest issue is going to be locating the address that that will be at because I'm fairly confident that custody is not going to give us an address that's got to grow in. First port of call is the suspect's home address. If we find some more at home, then that sort of strengthens our suspicion that he's dealing. He had three keys on him, including one that fits the garage. Inside, it doesn't take long to uncover more signs of dealing. Even labelled up two and a half ounces. Individual deals already made up. Loads. Yeah. And then... Oh, my word. Oh, beautiful. The mother load. Yeah, you got the pillows on deck. It's getting real uncomfortable with no pillows. I'm going to guess that there is multi, multi kilos of cannabis in here. Absolutely multi kilos of it. Welcome to Weed Central. Thousands of pounds worth of cannabis here. Oh, okay. You know, and we already know that he's not selling it like that. He's selling it in deals because that's what we've had out of him today in the car. So he's making a lot of money. Hence why his drawers in his garage are full of cash. Scales up here as well. Everywhere you look, there's more. Look. There's also unsold useful intel. Huh, dealers lists. Real. That's nice, though. I'm telling you, this this, this the dumbest. This, this is the this got to be the dumbest criminal to date. All of this stuff in one spot is crazy. Oh, who wears what? Like, why do you have this? Perfect. I don't think that this lad he even got the manifesto in the crib. is out doing his own thing, dealing by himself. He will be connected in some way to a bigger criminal fraternity. And it will be something to do with the person whose car he was driving today, who we know is involved in drug supply in this area. Do you want to bring a car up onto the drive so we don't have to walk all the way down the street with yeah. 10 kilos of cannabis? The Knife Crime team recovered five kilos of weed with a street value of around 50 grand. The investigation into the driver nicked in his mate's car. I know he's sick. <laughs> is ongoing. This lad that we've arrested today comes from a good home in a nice neighbourhood and for whatever reason he's got himself mixed up in some drug... You went to Cranbrook, that's a private school... No. ...dealing. Coming up! That's what's done! Only one piece of a... When interceptors nick a suspect, that's only one piece of a complex legal puzzle. Right, mate, you're under arrest and suspicion of possessing drugs. A case for prosecution relies on evidence. Well done, Ian. Drop the knife. It's just uh, on the corner of this grass here. And witnesses. Where the virgin break store is, just right there. The and one witness. Watch him if he gets up again, but. Is always reliable. There are more than 5 million CCTV cameras in the UK and they never lie. You said more than 5 million? I didn't know it was that many, God damn. Here it is. Mm. Yeah, that's our man. It's late evening. We did a shop theft in Selston earlier. Phil and Dan have been called to assist with a suspected shop theft linked to a silver golf. Approaching the uh, mini RA at the back of Morrison's. Stand by, please. Two cop cars are tailing the golf and the boys are blue lighting to help box it in. We are car three. No drive. But the cars just pulled in up ahead. Driver and passenger, both topless, are out of the golf. Phil takes the driver. 
Uh, not all, all afternoon. Now, your vehicle's been seen. It's a, uh, a shop theft. What, I got to see him rob it? Why? Because I ain't done it. Oh, I don't know, do we? That's why we having a chat. He denies all knowledge. And, to be fair, the guy captured here filling his basket, then leaving the co-op without paying looks nothing like him. His passenger, on the other hand, is a dead ringer. And what's more, he's just owned up. I've told him, I've took the bottle, which has to do with him. Hi, so you do know a little bit there. No, I don't. If I say I ain't gone into a shop and robbed, didn't it? I didn't even, I didn't even know he's done that. Right. I didn't tell him I've robbed him, but I just did. The driver won't be locked up, but his cooperative passenger, who has form for shop theft, is off to the nick. One of the mayors has. Uh... It was, hey, good looking out. You know you did that. They, but they gotta know. Everybody was aware of what was going on. He just was a stand-up criminal and took that charge, though. Um, bail conditions not to enter any co-op in the whole of the UK. So he's quite a, a prolific thief from co-op. The other lad is pleading innocence, so he said he didn't know anything about it. The driver of the Golf will be interviewed at a later date. It should be right, right here. But two weeks later... That's He's been reported for something far more serious. He's wanted for threats to kill and he might be in a vehicle. The driver's allegedly assaulted his ex and fled in the Gulf. Yes, sir, thank you. Paul Charlesworth and Lewis Marshall are in an armed response vehicle trying to find him. But it's dog handler Mark Haywood who spotted the golf across town. He's just seen it driving at speed, I think. Yeah, I'm just getting behind it. One person in the vehicle, I believe, is wanted for numerous offences, one being assault. Weaving around the roads. Paul and Lewis are ready to intercept. But that's easier said than done. Try and find where he is on the map. It's the first, first onto Portland Road. We're still on Portland Road. Portland Road, hope not. While the boys try to plot a way to Mark, the golf driver is taking bigger risks. Approaching Hucknall Town Centre, traffic lights on red, stand by, high risk, straight through. But the dog man can't stop the car on his own. Hucknall, I believe the firearms car is coming. Hopefully we'll get some more. Let's see if I... Paul and Lewis's ARV is still a way out, and they're struggling to zero in on Mark's chase. Where is it? Annesley Road. Annesley Road? Right, right, right. There he is. Just try and get a map and, up and, see, where, up and up. see where he is and then track him. Right. Y'all should have iPhones, find my location. And, uh, Share my location. Or um, but it may be too late. The driver, who's alleged to have assaulted someone, has bailed out. Please, that's the no, Stop, stop! Mark's out too, with police dog Morse. Stop, stop! Get on the floor! Get on the floor! There. Ah. Paul and Lewis arrive to find the abandoned dog car. Where with this car now? As the man's wanted on suspicion of assault, their first thought is for Mark's safety. <laughs> but they needn't fret. Because Mark has Morse. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Right, on your front. Lie on your front. On your front, keep your hands out of your pockets. Put your hands behind your back, yeah. Put your right hand behind your back. Uh, this lad's secure. We'll get you some details in a minute. Knees up to chest. Knees up to your chair. Oh, he's got a bar on his leg. Fox shot 2 8. Oh, I think it's this. Got in that little calf, didn't he? That little dog bite hurt. You shouldn't even have bailed out. <laughs> uh, lad from that domestic. Can you just confirm what he's wanted for, please? He's wanted for quite a bit. I'm under arrest, OK? Failed to stop. Yeah, dangerous driving. Threats to kill. Actual bodily harm. So you do not have to say anything. The may only offence. We don't mention when questioned. Something which you later yeah. find in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Yeah, I right, do. Yeah. 
The suspect has been injured, struggling with morse. Well, we'll get it sorted, don't worry. We're here to look after you now. Mate, I'm going to stick a bandage on your leg. I'm not going to lie to you, it'll hurt when it goes on. As a firearms officer, Paul's trained in advance. Yeah, yeah. Moss got you good. Moss look like a young dog. He got them young teeth. It's first aid and qualified to treat trauma injuries. Yeah, it's going to work, mate. But that doesn't mean it won't hurt. Bit. It's the easy bit. It's got to get a bit tighter now. Uh, it's painful going. Oh. It does it well, though, mate, because it just holds it in place, doesn't it? But he's soon patched up. All right, try not to move it too much, mate. Ready for a ride to the Nick? Bye. I honestly don't feel bad for him. You hit your girl, or you hit your ex, so... When you, when you hit her, it probably hit... It was probably worse pain. A way of A&E. Picked the wrong car to run from there, aren't he? Yeah. Not do that again, will he? Yeah. The man who unwisely tried to outrun Morse was reported for dangerous driving and failing to stop. No further action was taken for the alleged domestic incident. The cooperative passenger who robbed the co-op pleaded guilty to numerous shop theft offences. He was ordered to pay £100 compensation and issued with a community order, which was then revoked when he re-offended, after which he was given an eight-week suspended prison sentence. Damn, they're giving him chance after chance. Community service. Revoked, you did it again because you addicted to shoplifting. Got a suspended sentence, house arrest. Like, hey, is he ever going to go to jail? <laughs> In the UK, they be giving chances out there. It's well after midnight, but there's life in the late shift yet. Yeah. There's a car that's trying to evade cops and uh, force get away from them. Dan and Spencer are responding to a shout from local cops in the unmarked X5. Dan takes off to intercept. We're looking for a more focus on that here. Should be heavily damaged. Black focus. Spence Matt's comms. An H from Oscar Foxtrot 5 3 also travelling to the area. What's this? Staying sharp at 2 a.m. is a tall order. But good interceptors never lose their focus. focus. 5 3, we got a black focus at speed, Cinder Hill Road towards Bullwell. Shift him. Yep. He's done the old focus, hocus, pocus and gone lights out. But Dan's on him like a bumper sticker. Going to this. The pursuit driver has the night eyes of a fox and he's trained in tactical pursuit and containment. I failed to stop Bagnell Road. Other TPAC drivers are closing in. It's coming to a stop at Neston Drive, Cinder Hill. So on. But they won't be needed. To stop, stop. Keys out, mate. Dan's boxed him in like a sardine with its lights off. Nine, 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 activated. Okay, why did you turn your lights out when we were following you? When? When we were following you, you turned your lights out just before you turned down here. No, it's been pulled up. All right. Well, where do you live? Uh, Snenton. Snenton. Why have you come down here then? Everyone's looking for me, mate. <laughs> you won't find him with your lights off. Come on. I've been doing this a long time. You're looking for your mate down here? Yeah. The stolen car? No. Who did it belong to? Me. When did you buy it? This afternoon. All right. Got some insurance for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? I've always heard this excuse. Just, you just bought it. It's so convenient. You got some evidence of that on your phone or something somewhere? No, not on this one. No. We received, uh, he's saying he's just bought it, which is unfortunate. <laughs> Not done well then, you've had it less than a day and it's already smashed to bits. I know. The bloke is confused about why he's been stopped. He was oh, travelling at excessive speed. Off. Stay where you are. Yeah. You're travelling at excessive speed and you turn your lights off. This is nowhere near Snenton, it's not the direction to Snenton. And it's absolute crap that you're looking for some friends around here, isn't it, Steve? No, you can't say that that's, that's absolute crap. How do you know that's absolute crap? It certainly sounds like it. Well, what friend are you looking for? Well, he ain't down here, is he? Clearly. Who? Who? Don't matter who it is. 
Well, come on, he's, tell the, if you're going to tell a story, tell the full story. I'll start. Once upon a time, there was a boy. <laughs> ah, hey, the narrator the best, but the narrator make who, the, the, whoever this guy is, he makes this show the best one on air. He ain't down here. There's it. nobody better at this. Who is he? Who? who? Hey, so who it is. Once upon a time. Well, come on, he's, tell the, if you're going to tell a story, tell the full story. I'll start. Once upon a time, there was a boy who couldn't lie straight in bed. Can I, can I get a name check on our driver, please? Couldn't lie straight in bed. That's tough. A check on Stevie. No, mate. Oh. You're showing us a disqualified driver, Steve. But who? And the plot thickens. I'm not sorry. You're showing us a disqualified driver. I don't think so. You're disqualifying him to the 18th of August. Today's August the 4th. Another two weeks, you've been off your disc wall. Bam. Which is unfortunate. Hmm. Can we jump in our car? Just follow me to this car. Back in Dan's office. Stephen, where have you bought the, or got this car from then? Got a lad of Eastwood earlier. Ah, the classic lad from Eastwood. A lad of, in Eastwood? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know his name or details or anything? No, no, I didn't really get much details from him. Have you got a V5 or anything for it? No, there's no V5, I've got a plug for it. Right, do you see the issue we have? He said V5, what's that? In that, you're driving a car, it's not registered to you, you're disqualified, and you've got no insurance. Other than that, you're a model driver. How do we know you haven't stolen it? I can, I can only tell you what, do you know what I mean? Not really. He ain't even saying nothing. He said, I can only, I can, you know what I mean? Bro literally said, I can only, I can only, you know what I mean. Am I tweaking? I can, I can only tell you what, do you know what I mean? No. Not really. Well, I got told you, I had a bit of rear end damage, bike chief and door up. I've worked in the most trades for how many years? Okay. Okay, but you're disqualified. I think we'll take it as a disc wall. Yeah, take the car. And we, we know who he is. Wait, mate, you, you're driving whilst disqualified. When's that from? I, I can find out. Please? Apparently, he doesn't know he's banned. Just like he doesn't know the name of the guy who sold him the car. And how long have you owned it? Yeah, about an hour. Really, that short a time? Yeah, that short a time, yeah. Who buys a car at one o'clock in the morning? The sort who swiftly gets it seized by the cops. Right then, mate. We'll let you out and you can get on your way. You can be okay finding your mate? I've looked for him, yeah. Yeah? Do I just help, help you or...? No, no, I'm... I'll... Talk your way out of this release. I'll, I'll struggle on my own. Okay. No. You out. Get up. Get gone. No worries. Let us know if you need us to help. Give your hand. What you know, Rick's sick. Nine, nine, nine. That's the one, yep. See you later. Ta-da. Watch where you're going. Good point. Folk drive with no lights on round here. I think he was only two weeks away from finishing his ban. Because it now means he's going to get another ban. That's going to get extended. The bloke from the Ropey Motor got another ban of six months, plus a three-month suspended prison sentence after he pleaded guilty to driving without insurance and driving whilst disqualified. It's anyone's guess if he ever found his mate. Wait, whose car was it though? Was it stolen or not? Coming up. Standby vehicle, suit lost control. Standby, standby vehicle has crashed, but is continuing. Some youngsters are model drivers by the time they pass their test, but interceptors rarely run into them. Standby vehicle is losing control. They're more concerned with young guns who rip up the road without any license at all. Okay. Oh boy, trying to hit that speed bump like like. Like they're not there for a purpose, you know what I'm saying? Speed bumps are there for three, two, three reasons. Children play in that area a lot. That's one reason. The second reason, there's a lot, there's a lot of previous car chases in this area. That's the second. What was my third reason? I'm tweaking. Or there's a school. It's the only three reasons. Something with you later on in call. Ah! Tell my mama's gonna kill me. Boy, you should have just stopped. From a 
police perspective, a lot of the young drivers that we deal with uh, have got no real uh, consideration for experience. To get a licence, you, you obviously have to do a driving test, which evidences that you can drive to the required standard. Um, folks that don't have licences clearly haven't proven that, and for the vast majority that we deal with, the reason they haven't got a licence is because they can't pass a test. Um, and they aren't driving at the required standard, so it, it, uh, it just it just increases the, the the danger to themselves and to all the road users. What are you on about? Let's get to it. It was a dark and stormy night in Nottingham. A true horror show on the road. This the worst. What's up with him telling stories? This is the second story. Type of weather next to snow fog and rain. These conditions would test an experienced driver, but Rob Ely and Dan Machin are after a rookie of the road. A teenager who's behind the wheel of a silver Astra. Remember the public supported that, a lot of young lads are in it and driving it and they look, um, looks like extremely young, too young to drive. So it's a young, inexperienced first driver. In conditions like this, it's miserable, it's wet, it's slippy. It's a recipe for disaster on a night like tonight. Rob's an all-weather advanced driver. Come rain or shine, he'll rein in the teenager in the silver astro. Policing pet peeve liars. Well, you get to, you experience that every day, don't you? It's the wrong profession if that's a pet peeve. Right. Don't that, so he's to send up and arrest anyway, so it's going to oh, be up what there that? as well. What was the first four? KJ56. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. They clocked the target car on the opposite carriageway. We have this vehicle, uh, Nuttall RA. It's uh, just going through the sequence of the lights onto the RA. We've got no indication of occupants. We did not get a look in. Seems like he's using his blinkers and everything, though. Time for a closer look. Go on. Yes, go on, Roger. Uh, let's just go for a conventional stop and see, see what comes about. Attention. Got a uh, near side indication, uh, lights are illuminated. Just going to drive an hour standby. Alright, everybody, you alright? No, Is it your car? Yeah. Cool, don't jump out for me. Right then. You insured on it? Yeah. Good. You got a license? Yeah. No, I got a license. Come on, then, jump in the car. Baby driver claims it's his motor, but the teenager shouldn't even be behind the wheel. Jump him. Hey, Squire. Yeah. Squire. No license. Not got a license, pal. Oh dear. Why, why not? Why are you driving me out of license? I don't. Why are you driving me out of license? Stupid. Yeah. How old are you? Um, 19. 19. Uh, what's your first name? Jack. You ever been in trouble with the police? You've been arrested. You have. Jack's known to police, meaning his mugshot is on their database, which Rob can access with the touch of a button. That's not you. Busted. What's your real name? Pardon? What's your real name? Mate, we're not stupid. Fake Jack is on a tight-lipped journey in the wrong direction nearing the path of no return. Near the path of jail. Uh, we're at a crossroads now, my friend. Yeah. We can be up, straight up and honest, oh, or you can keep talking rubbish, and it's a one-way trip to the Bridewell. Right. Matters not to me, because I'm on all night anyway. Yeah. Are we going to be real with each other? Yeah. Right. right. Give us your real name, or we are just going to go to the Bridewell. Declan. There we go. So Declan has been trying to pass off as Jack, who's actually the passenger in the front seat. It's his car. He's been drinking, that's why I was trying. Ah. It's always best to ensure your designated driver has a driving light. You know what's crazy? My boy was drinking, right? And he was too drunk. When I lived in Chicago, I lived in Humble Park. He was like, yo, bro, I'm by your crib, man. Can you drive me home and I'll Uber you back to the crib? I'm drunk, and I'm like, okay, cool. I get in this car, I think I'm doing a, you know, service. You know what I'm saying? I get in the car, police get behind us, pull us over. I'm like, bro, I'm just taking him home, he drunk. Yeah, I got a license, blah, blah, blah. 
I'm like, he just, I live right here. He just called me to take him to the crib where he going to open me on. He like, there's no insurance on the car. I'm bro. They're like, yeah, we need to take your license. I'm bro. Take his license. This ain't my car. I'll take mine. I'm just doing a favor. I, I give him the DUI then. No, I ain't say all that, but like, damn. License. So you don't have a See, see, that, that was me not minding my business. I should have said, hell no, I'm asleep. Mm. License whatsoever. Mm. Right. You did the tour. Do do the tour? Yeah, mate, yeah, 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 do it, yeah. What's the tour? A traffic offence report, so you're going to be reported for summons for driving without insurance or a licence. It's going to be a long walk home in the rain for him and his mates. You can, you can jump out. It's, um, the car's been taken. Oh, it's been okay. taken? Yeah, we're seizing the car. So, right. off, off you go. Because you've been driving with no licence and no insurance. Yeah? I'm joking. No, I'm no, 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 you're not joking, are you? To get his car back down the line, all the real Jack needs to do is to give the right details now. I don't know my real address. Jack oh, Frank. Well, I, mate, I don't care, because you, you don't get your car back, so it's no bother to me. They know his real name, and it's not Jack French. We're not bothered about you sat in the passenger seat. You've not been driving. You are not the issue. But if you want that car back, we need your name and your address. Because your now, car is Now, let think it. about that. It's up to you if we give it us or not. If you don't, you're not get that car back. And when you put it like that, are you going to give me your address? All right. Lovely. That'll do. Thank you. All good. Yeah, go for it. I, thought you, I was waiting for you to open it. I'm not used to it. No, all, all good, right. mate. <laughs> See you later. Cheers. The driver's night is a washout, but he could have weathered a far worse fate. So we were saying it's a recipe for disaster. They'd have been swapping drivers later in the night. It's wet. It's slippy. Wait, so who took the car? Um, that'd, have, that'd have been a crash. So, All of them unlicensed. Yeah. Uninsured. Inexperienced drivers. Yeah. Showing off to the mates. It's, it's just, it's never going to end well, is it? Never, ah. ever going to end well. No. The lad formerly known as Jack pleaded guilty to driving without insurance. He was fined £120 and given six penalty points on his licence. What licence? See, I love you. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bell. Bye.